Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss Talk. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Mr. Maker. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my dad walk on. Man, we got a guy here today, y'all. Hey, this is this is my guy. Hey, man, he always got something going, too, man. I see, Hey, man, we got a lot to talk about today, man. Mr. Pippin Ken himself is in the building on Boss Talk 101. What's up, brother? Hey, man. Hey, man. Everything up, man. You know, cost of living, price of coochie, everything. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> man, just Man, just good to see you, man. Look, look, hey, looking great, man. Look, the, the As brother. usual. The brother be on it, man. You know what I'm saying? I got to make me, I, I got to step my game. <laughs> I don't remember, all that walking you got me doing ain't doing a damn thing. It's all about what you eat. Oh, okay. I got to yeah, You got to walk it. You got to talk it. Too. Hey. <laughs> you got to walk it. You got to speak with two toes. The one in your mouth and the one in your shoe. You got to walk that walk and talk that talk. Man, I see the books right here, man. So, oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So I seen you, just to just to go back a little bit, I seen you uh, just here recently uh, with Boosie on Beehive. Yeah. And I had seen you guys, uh, uh, you know, just doing, doing, doing the interview. I seen him on there. Um, the book. Just explain to me about the book, Cross the Tracks. What What's going on with that? Okay, well, uh, I, I wrote a book called The 48 Laws of Game, yeah. right? And uh, it did extremely well for my publishing company, which is Simon & Schuster, which is owned by CBS. It's one of the biggest companies in the world. And uh, initially, the people up there didn't think that the book was going to do well, you know, because they really ain't into us, you know what I mean? They really ain't into our culture. And you know, uh, the guy, uh, Jeremy, who's my uh, publisher's publisher, you know, he was arguing that this, go, this book is gonna do well. You know, and uh, eventually the book sold millions and millions and millions of copies. I, I broke the record, it's in its 20th printing. Wow. I don't know mm -hmm. if you know what that means. Mm -mm. That means that they had to reprint it 20 times. Usually wow. print, it go out of print. Mine is still, and so I offered them to buy, um, my printing back the other day, and he said, no, hell no, nah. this is a classic. <laughs> and uh, Richie Richards in the car with me, he was laughing. I said, man, those motherfuckers ain't giving me that motherfucking <laughs> printing. But the funny thing about it was, you know, we did so well that, uh, you know, they they took a liking for me. So I can call them and cuss them out anytime, make them go through my, you know, my accounting and everything. So we developed a relationship. And uh, one time I was on the phone with uh, Steve-O, who's, also a business partner of mine, you know, we kind of help, you know, with, you know, liquor deals, you know, we, uh, you know, uh, uh, under Steve-O and me, you know, we was able to help a lot of people get liquor deals. You know, we, uh, uh, Steve and Boosie with the, uh, the uh, Pixie Palo situation with Forte International, uh, you know, we know uh, James and uh, uh, Master P over there, so I, I had Steve-O go over there and lock that deal down. You know, we got the Boosie Rap Snacks, you know, fucking with James now. We uh, got the Cologne dude, you know, we helped with the yeah, Cologne. Yeah, I seen that. You know what I'm saying? We did, uh, you know, a whole bunch of shit to book deal. So Steve was like, man, look, you know what I'm saying? You know, because he's my partner. You know, he my silent partner. I'm yeah. his silent partner. We do a lot of shit together. He said, Ken, let's add another division. Let's do the books. So I called the people and I said, man, you know, I got the Ken Ivy Literary Foundation, which was basically what we just made up. You know what I'm saying? We made it up just to have a conversation. I said, we want to do books for African Americans. You know, we want to inspire young African Americans to read. You know, so I got some people that I think that we could be, you know, very, uh, you know, we could be very successful with. So I knew that I could, you know, do Boosie book first. So, you know, we had already, you know, like I said, Boosie's a mogul. He's a businessman. You know, he's making big moves. You know, just he just got... Steve-O and me as partners, you know what I'm saying? We help him, you know, but he's really the mastermind behind what he want to do. We just got the connections. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, that being said, you know, uh, we went over there, we talked to him, and they was all the way with it, you know. And so when we got to hearing the numbers and the kind of money, they got, they said, well, can you get Bruno Mars? Mm. I said, how much for Bruno Mars? We give you three million right now. They said, oh, can you man. get Travis Scott? They said, man. And I'm telling you, man, hearing that kind of money, man, and being having that access to the bag changed my whole perspective. So I immediately called Ice T and got him a six figure deal. I immediately called uh, Corey Wise and got him a six figure deal. We about to get uh, my man uh, uh, Jack Hollow. We working okay. with his management late a deal. You know, we got uh, we, I sit down. You know, 
know, y'all seen on Instagram, me and Master P, we was yeah, talking about yeah, his deal. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I sit down, we actually, you know, working on something, you know, with them. But, you know, that didn't go all the way the way we wanted to plan. But we still, you know, got a hand out for Master P. You know what I mean? I, it's, the whole conversation is on my Instagram. So, you know, we basically, you know, just got into this business, you know, just basically him wanting to take Boosie to the next level and we wanted to just expand our brand and our relationships, you know, as we began to, you know, build things like the hip hop fraternity so we can have an outlet for these artists. So that was the whole thing. But man, it just turned out, you know what I'm saying? It worked out and, you know, they was just talking that money, man, then I, this became a new hustle for me. You know what I mean? It became my business. So now I'm technically, you know, love, Ivy and love, agency so me and Steve have the Ivy Love Literary Agency so we did the Boosie book for six figures we did the Ice-T book for six figures we did the Corey Wise book for six figures now we're dealing with millions you know now it's, it's a whole different conversation so you know I'm trying to tell my people don't look at me just as Pippin Kid don't put a period on my name put a comma Correct. Pippa Ken, comma, literary agent. Pippa Ken, comma, founder of the hip hop fraternity. Pippa Ken, comma, you know, real estate. You know, Pippa Ken, comma, you know, everything. So, you know, we do a whole bunch of things, you know, movies. You know, I got books, everything. So, author, you know, I got two books of my own. The 48 Laws of the Game and the Art of Human Chess. So that's how the book deal came about. It's just me doing really well with the publishing company and, you know, Steve-O wanting to expand, you know, our situation, our companies, and you know, we do movies and everything. You know, we got a movie on uh, on uh, Tubi right now, Trust Nobody. You know what I'm saying? You know, the first check was, was ugly. So, you know what I'm saying? And we got movies coming out called the, we got actually a documentary called, a documentary called The Making of the Autobiography of this book. And one of this book is already completed. Let me see that. Let me see it. Man, this but is I a got nice a good, book. But I got a question because you said um, they did that for six figures, but at six figures, does that go straight to Boosie or how much of that six figures come to you? split it. Let huh? me break it down to you? Yes. Okay, say for instance, if I was doing a book deal for you, right? Mm -hmm. And I got you half a million dollars, right? right. So I get 15% as an okay. agent. So that's the standard fee. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you get 15% of the, ant, the advance and 15% of the duration of the book. So, you know, if the book do really well, you know, we get 15% of that as well. And the way how society is going, um, I see a book, you know, book is like in my days, but I see a lot of people straying from books. I don't see a lot of the newer generation grabbing a book, reading a book. They more do it on like Kindle or, yeah, you know, we got all that too. Like see, we got all platforms. Okay. So Boosie's gonna also do an audio book where he's gonna read the book. Right. You know, we're gonna do a Kindle, we're gonna do an e book, you know what I mean? It's 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 like wherever you want, you know what I'm saying? These people is, they they lace, they got it. You know, like wow. my book, I get money on different platforms, you know. Which category sells more between the well, hardcover? In my case in my case, the hardcover usually don't sell as well. Right. The hardcover is really for hardcore book people. Right. You know, people who are book aficionados, you know, who who really mm -hmm. into the book industry. So they go get the hardcover. Right. Then it reverts to paperback. Mm -hmm. And then the paperback, it goes like, in my in case of my book, how long will you know it be printed? You know, what is the demand for the book? You know, if the book is demand two years from now, my book been out years and it's still sell right. like it just came out. And paperback is normally out. cheaper than the hardcover book. Yeah, well, yeah, the hardcover is probably about $36, right. paperback about 19 Exactly, that's how much it normally go for. Yeah, but then you also, you have your audio files that right. they, they, you know, they, that, that this opened the door for a lot of things, you exactly. know what I mean? Um, just, just skimming through it, just looking at the fact of, you know, uh, Boosie's whole, his whole uh, legacy and story uh, is to be told because of all the ups and downs that he went through in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we talk about the death row situation. The death you know, row we talk situation. about his father, you know, situation, you know, yep. you know uh, battling with drugs. You know, we talk about, you know, his relationship with his mama, some of the things that happened that led to Boosie, you know, the incident at the store. You know, we talk about, you know, his uh, first love. You know, we, it's, it's, it's a whole thing that, that we cover. But I want to talk about, let me see that book. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it, it, I ladies it, I and gentlemen, it, I it, I, this book was pure <laughs> hell. Man, let me tell you something. The How first, long did it take? Man, it took us like two years. The first guy, 
know what I'm saying? I don't know. Can you say somebody's name on here? Yeah. yeah. So ahead. the first white guy is a white guy named uh, Tucker Max. You know, he did the Tiffany Haddish book. Uh, okay. Okay, Tucker you know, Max. So, 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 so he was the first. He was like Dr. Dre of the book. Okay. So unfortunately, you know what I'm saying? We, you know, we, we was trying to get Boosie to get on time, but Boosie was late. So he was late. We talk about this in the documentary. So Boosie was late Damn. to get into the thing. So the guy, he skewed, he excused us. He said, okay, the next time. So we went to his house. To, we were supposed to go to his mansion in, uh, in Austin. So we go, uh, uh, get ready to go to his mansion. <laughs> and, you know, we was late again. So the guy said, I'm out. Oh, so really? Boosie he gets on Instagram. Two chances. Yeah, Boosie yeah. gets on Instagram. And Boosie said, hey, if anybody know how to write a book, da, 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 da. I think I remember that. Yeah, so this was all re re revolving this book. So Boosie gets on Instagram and Kevin Powell. Kevin Powell's a guy that in the Tupac movie and all that. So Kevin Powell came through and saved the day, you know what I mean? And, you know, I gave him a fat check right quick. You know, we wrote him a check. And you know he uh, he proceeded to do it, and then he ended up getting busy because he's doing. I think uh, the guy, what's the big time drug digger, drug dealer? Uh, Which one? I think it's, <laughs> right. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, uh, Tupac. Now he's doing Tupac book. Okay. So that Tupac book took it Trump. You know what he yeah, had going on exactly, with us. Exactly. So we lost him as well. So we ended up had to get another author. So we went to three authors, and the, the publishing company told us they said, uh, listen. If y'all don't get this book out, they'll remind you they gave us Tucker Max first. So they right. said, and then we fought Boosie went and got Kevin Powell through social media. So now they telling us that you, the contract said you have you got to have a, deli a deliverable manuscript. It means that you got to have a complete manuscript. So you know we didn't have a complete manuscript. They gave us X amount of days. So we went bust some moves and we got an author right and. Uh, Finally, you know, he was like, and the author better be good. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh my goodness. So we going through all this stuff while, while Ice Tea book going smoothly with him and Doug Century and uh, 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 his man Spike. So you know what I'm saying? Everything going good with the Ice Tea book because we doing both books simultaneously, right? And but we documenting all this, and so finally, you know, uh, we got the book where it was acceptable. You know Boosie, what I mean? Boosie, hell, man, I already know where I get man, down. Hey, man, Boosie, man, he cussed the people out the first day. They said something about. They said uh, what? They say they said. Uh, yeah, man, I ain't gonna say no rapper day. This ain't no, this ain't no to get no clout neither, y'all. So all you motherfuckers think I don't do that sucker <laughs> shit. First of all, I'm telling you motherfuckers straight facts. So uh, it's a rapper. I ain't gonna say his name. <laughs> okay. But uh, he wrote a book, and uh, Simon Schuster tried to compare that book to Boosie. Man, ain't no motherfucker calling it Boosie. Hey, hey, man, ain't no motherfucker been on death row. Boosie just went off, man. He yeah, got the cuss yeah. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, where ain't even got the money yet? You know what I'm saying? I know he did. He don't I'm play. Like, I'm like, Boosie, please, please, please. You know what I'm saying? This was our first deal, man. He don't man. care. Man, Didn't Boosie, he do hey, it? That's how he had it. Boosie cussed the motherfucker out, man. You know what the motherfucker said? <laughs> I, he know, we talk like that. He, he, my man, he, 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 he's a white dude. He's, he's executive, but he know he, he, he fuck with black folks all the time. He said, that fucking Boosie funny. I'm <laughs> I said, oh, thank you, God. I said, Boosie, cuss these motherfuckers all the way. Hey, man, that shit was crazy, man. Me and my nigga, we both like, because, you know, my nigga, you know, Steve would deal with Boosie like every other day. So he's like, man, I try to tell you. You know what I'm saying? No, said, that's oh, a like, movie. Do you understand man, the we making? Got it, we got it. Oh, we got the making of it. Oh, we God, got, that's hey, so we got, hilarious. We got, we, we, you think other people got good information on Boosie. We was there doing the whole entire situation with him and Kevin Powell. So we documented everything. And we're going to put it in a movie form, so a documentary form, so people can actually you see. You're going to do a documentary or a movie? It's you a docu-series. So a docu-series is, the reason why we did a documentary because it's just the making of the book. All the ups and downs that we had to go through to make this book. You know, people leaving us and leaving us abandoned. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I mean, we had, uh, the book was transcribed by Cal. So Kev had to leave in the middle of a transcription. So right. you got to remember the next author had to go through the transcription, he had to go through the transcribed version of it, and he had to create a story out of that that was all Boosie's story, but as it was transcribed. Because you know- well, what I, That's the thing I was wondering, when you're going through three different authors and one started but stopped, does the next one you know, pick up where he stopped and just keep going, or he has to start all over well, the again? Well, the only thing good about Boosie- And then Boosie? who gets the credit at the end for the whole entire book? Is it the last author? Well, well, well Boosie get the credit, because it's his book. 
I so know, but you, for the writer though, that that don't make a difference. Okay. So so if if all of them jump off board, they don't get no credit. They getting credit now, but I'm just saying, you know, technically, you know, it's Boosie's book. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, me? And it's his story. They right. just basically, like, you know, you got you in court, you know, and somebody typing, typing your case. Right. That's all they doing. So okay. at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, when you think about it, uh, Boosie, you know what I'm saying, he he, he going to get the credit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we mm -hmm. get the credit. You know, mm -hmm. we, we, we the ones that put it together. So, but they could have got the credit. Like here, you see Ice-T and Doug Century. You don't see that like that. It just says Boosie Badass. Yeah. A memoir. So if the if the author stay on and he keep it real, we're going to give him the credit. But if they back out or they I do some, some shit, you know, that ain't cool, you know, you might not get recognized. But Tucker Max didn't do anything. So Kev, you know, he did. You know, I'm giving him his credit now. He did, but, it, you know, to his credit, he had a major project with Tupac out. You know what I mean? He had to get that done. Right. Let me ask you this. Coming behind a book, a lot of times you see movies and different things start to pop out. And I know Boosie's already did his own, you know, movies before now. Do you think he'll be doing anything in comparison to this book coming out? Well, Boosie do a lot of movies. Definitely, you know, Boosie's an entrepreneur. Boosie definitely gonna do a movie off this That's book. That's what I was thinking. So now Ice-T is gonna also do a book with his, a movie off his book. Now let me tell you how, how smart Ice-T was. I don't wanna go to that yet. I wanna okay. ask you about this about this okay. book because me and you, we got some dealings to do it because during the time you was coming here, uh, you ended up, uh, 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 you was talking about the Vlad thing and I, the book hadn't came out yet or had it finished already? No, I haven't came out yet. But just for people to know, this yeah, is a yeah. picture of me and Boosie. Yeah, you know what but I'm so you you in the book? Let yeah, not that. only is I'm in the book, but listen with the book. The last words you hear in the book is that I'm the one that put the book together. So yeah. you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. you know, I don't think I think the problem is a uh, 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 CEO is that a lot of people don't believe the validity or they don't understand, you know, how much of a consummate businessman I am. So they think, you know, that I'm just capping. A lot of people do be capping, you know what I'm saying? I'm just one of the dudes that I ain't gonna say nothing if it ain't 100, you feel me? Yeah, I, I, and I just, I, I spoke on that because last time when he was on here, you talked about Vlad. Yeah, Vlad, uh, but and see what Vlad you, but with you and him having such close business together, I could see why it could That's be why I was upset. so concerning. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I was upset yeah. because I thought that Vlad was trying to create some wedge between me and Boosie by asking him a question and uh, kind of discrediting, you know, what I was saying. You know, yeah. like, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say it's a sex tape on Pimp C and it's not, uh, or not on Pimp C, that Pimp C had access to a sex tape if it wasn't true. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So me, but you know, you was here, it wasn't, it wasn't like a it wasn't a so thing. We it just, it, it just came it popped out, out yeah. in, in the in the in the, the social media, media ran with it. They ran with it. So for people to understand, it wasn't no clock. So now that you know, he's asking Boosie, Vlad asking Boosie about the, the 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 sex tape with Pimp C. I'm like, man, this is my man. I've been knowing this. I was there when they was in the studio when this man was a kid. Yeah. The man, if you go listen to Boosie album. You know, way back in, he, he said, I'm in Milwaukee like Pimp and Ken. This was, he was, before we ever met, the man was rapping about me. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I mean, my, in my city, Boosie is called the mayor of Milwaukee. You know what I'm saying? Because niggas love him so much because they love me. Wow. My niggas embraced him because he represent, and he said Milwaukee in the tape. Ever since then, he been able to go there and get a check. Steve is from Milwaukee. Yeah. Boosie is heavily, I'm from Milwaukee. He's very entrenched with Milwaukee. You know what I'm saying? Milwaukee yeah. niggas got his back. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if something happened to Boosie, we go in the bet. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? When, when, it's, this was a, a, a guy that I fuck with, so I was kind of, you know. I Sensitive felt, about that. I, I wasn't upset because I don't never let my emotions supersede my intelligence, but I know if I didn't say it in the graphic form that I said it, it wouldn't have been felt the way I wanted to be felt, the yeah. way I wanted to be felt. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? But no, me and Boosie helped, so we got deals. So, the last thing I want Boosie to do is to say something, and then, you know what I'm saying? Me and niggas don't think business. that me and Boosie yeah. ain't got no, no business. You know what I'm saying? Because what, however Boosie feel about me or however I feel about Boosie, we still... Our businessmen, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we but y'all got a solid relationship. Yeah, we got, we cool, man. We solid, you know what I'm saying? The, You're a good dude. You, all you gotta do is look at the videos I just put up. He's smiling, we laughing and joking, having a good time. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we we outside, you know, a, a, a beehive talking about. We I on our that. way to, on our way to Nori House, you know. We on we on we finna do a thing with Nori. We, we calling Nori together. I mean, so you know, I mean, it's like. You know, the thing that, you know, I don't have nothing personally against Vlad. I was just, I'll, so people won't think that it's a beef with me about, all I was saying, Vlad, any questions that you have about Pimp C and the sex tape, you could come call, call me. 
And just thank God that I got people like you that that tell the truth and want the truth. I want the people to know the truth because this was before the book came out. That's what I. Yeah, that's so, the part. What so, I was but if about. you read the comments on some of your pages, someone said, "Man, what the fuck that nigga Pimpy Ken? That nigga man with, with, with Boosie and this and that and other. Like me and Boosie got beef. You know what I mean? Yeah. Niggas is like yeah. acting like I'm really." Going to, up against Boosie when I'm trying to tell niggas, no, nah, me and Boosie got business, business together. together. We try to sell books. So y'all go get this book, you know what I'm saying, right now, yeah, Amazon.com, across the track. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, that's the only thing I was trying to tell Vlad, and I was just trying to tell him man to man. Get yeah. at me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's been you dealing know. with the culture for a long time, so yeah. at the end of the day, that, that shit. No, nah, but be ain't no beef with yeah. me. Ain't no beef. That's I mean, fixable. I, I'm too old for beef, man. You know. <laughs> I want to ask you about, I seen, uh, when I was skimming through, uh, uh, the, the, I seen the part of uh, C. Murder in there while he was locked up with C. Murder. Right. That's going to be an interesting story. They should work in the kitchen Inter together. Yeah, that's an interesting read. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, different things like that. Those are things that I know when I was with Mac, uh, when I interviewed Mac, Mac, said that he had been locked up with uh, C. Murder and he was doing good, you know. Uh, a lot of people in that system down there end up be being in the same facility in yeah. Louisiana, man. Yeah, T a lot T of T T D C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy down there. So, yeah, yeah, other than that, man, like I said, I want definitely, got, I know me and Boo, I got a link with Boosie, man. Got yeah, we to, definitely, this platform, we definitely got gonna make to sure happen. that happened, man. I already uh, know it, we already been talking about it. Yeah. For sure, man. Uh, so I want let's get into this one now. Ice T. Okay. I didn't see this one coming. You ain't spoke. You ain't tell me about this one. Well, you know this is all on the view, and uh, you know, like I said, I'm I'm a modest person, man. I try not to brag. You know, I'm more of a chess player, so you know I'm a tactician, so I move. You know, real methodical. You know what I'm saying? It's like you ain't gonna know what's happening until it's time for it to happen. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people, you know, they hockey, they play hockey, they try to block you. You know, and then it's a lot That's of- That's real. Yeah, yeah, it's real. It's a lot of people, you know, in corporate, you know, cause I got the hip hop fraternity. I got so many big things Shut going up. on. I'm actually a threat to a lot of entities. You know what I'm saying? And they don't, they know how I'm moving. You know, people know I got access to millions of dollars, but they ain't gonna let nobody know. You know what I'm saying? When I get up under certain artists and stuff like that, and I'm trying to get them a bag, people get in my business, they be like, you know, woo, 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 you know? So sometimes I might have to send a broad, you know, a pretty broad at them, you know what I mean? I might have to send, you know, a white dude at them, you know what I'm saying? I gotta send somebody else at them because they don't wanna, you know, let me do what I need to do to kind of get our culture back. Yeah, See, a yeah. lot of people there ain't standing up for the culture, but I'm highly intelligent when it comes to the black experience. You know what I'm saying? I understand, you know, I read Dr. Ben, you know, uh, uh, the black man in Dallas. I read yeah. the, uh, 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 Dr. I need Dr. Naeem Akbar. I read Chancellor Williams. You know, I read the Broder Files. I didn't read, you know, the Stolen Legacy, George J. J. G. M. James. You know what I'm saying? So I know a lot of stuff. And I also read the 48 Law of Power. I went, read Prince Machiavelli. So I understand the, the machinations and the schemes and and how, like I was telling people about, you know, the podcast, I think me and you was having a conversation about that. I'm gonna get back to the book. We was having a conversation. I said, a lot of these podcasts, in particular, you know, certain people, what they're doing, they're paying a lot of money for artists to come on these podcasts. Yeah. That's going to ultimately turn podcasts that ain't got their foot in the game into moms and pops. That's right. Because under the uh, 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 COVID-19, you know, during COVID, we understood that, you know, this is an outlet. So a lot of us created this outlet, and in the exactly. process of creating this outlet, we became very successful and very Correct. famous. Correct. So now, you know, it's people that was in the game before us, they trying to figure out how to X us out and oh, you know, tic-tac-toe. So they putting, they giving these artists money. Now these artists is, is not going to be too uh, enthused about doing a podcast. your podcast right. because they know they can get paid for doing that. that so now it's like, you know, Best Buy and Walmart. You yeah. know, versus mom and pops. Yeah. So, you know, the mom and pops couldn't get the artists to come in and do in stores. But, you know, Best Buy, they'd come there with no with no hesitation. With no hesitation. I've seen that and and what do you think about that? No, he's totally right. I've seen that too. Yeah, but at the end of the day, I think it, it really when you're dealing with people like me and you, Pimpy Ken, and I say me and you, when you really touch the streets and then you you understand that you gotta get it out the mud, mm -hmm. it's a challenge. And anything that challenges us it really pretty much make us want to go harder. You know, you you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we figure it out a way. Well, black people always figure stuff out, really, to be honest with you. Because yeah. when you look at the store we in, uh, the only uh, black store in this, over here, period, in can, this whole can, city. Can I say something? Doing slavery, right? Uh, black folks weren't allowed to eat pork chops. They weren't allowed to eat number of the, 
the prime part of the pig. So we had to eat what they call pig feet, yeah. neck bones, and chitlins. Chitlins, yeah. And we call it chitlins. So uh, during you know the uh, Jim Crow era, black folks weren't allowed to perform in the arenas or any of the main facilities. So we had to go to what they call the what? Chitlin circuit. Chitlin circuit. You know what I'm saying? So black folks have always been able to, you know, take a pig and make chitlins out of it and make it a delicatessen. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of people love pig, you know, now in pig feeding. That's right. And, and they love pork chalk and all that stuff because black folks made it popular. That's right. You know what I'm saying? The same thing with hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Me, they said that you know hip hop was chitlins. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That it wasn't no it wasn't gonna last to uh, pop or nowhere to right. rock and roll or country music. But now it's the number one music in the history of this country. You know what I mean? Number one genre. So you know we have always took something. You know, took nothing, and made, made something out of nothing. Out of you know yeah. what I'm saying? Me, so you know, even you know with the book game. You know what I'm saying? Me, you know, I figured out how to uh, trump all of the so-called European or uh, white agencies who dominate the publishing company. Real talk. So by me getting out here as an agent and promote my books and my artist books, my author books myself, and me, you know, doing other things that I do like creating these docu-series and stuff like that that's gonna go on these across these different platforms, it puts me in another dimension. You know, uh -huh. but because of who we are and because as black folks we had to always make something out of nothing, well this is basically who we are. You know, and and wow. That's real. Yeah. That's so real. Um, I had to jump subjects. We're going to get to the book. It was something you just said. When we started talking about the old, I thought about academics. And academics been going in uh, on LL, Russell Simmons. He been really, because of what you're, with me and you kind of discussing it. He don't, he feel like he don't owe them anything. Because he says, hey man, you know, we, uh, you know, I didn't get nothing from y'all. I didn't get no direction. I came through an independent route. I can speak now personally. he says, $20 million later, I don't have to answer to y'all. And I can say what I want to say on my platform. How do you feel about that? I feel the exact same way because a lot of these artists, right, they're the same usual suspects. So you got these people at the top tier. And they've been the same people at the top tier for years. So when an artist come out, a new artist like Drake or something, they jump on this album, or Lil Baby, they jump on this album to stay relevant, right? but they don't give nothing back to the culture. You know what I'm saying? They, they, it's like a popsicle. They sucking on the same popsicle until ain't no sickle left, it's just a stick. And yeah. this is what a lot of these people who's established, and you know, and they talk about all these white people and this Universal and all these other companies, but some of them do to artists worse than what even these people have done to them. You know what I mean? Wow. And the worst thing you could do is not pass the baton. You know, and I think a lot of them, they hold on to it. And you know, some of them almost, some of them are grandparents, grandparents and they just want to hold on to it when they could have been passed out. You got people that's in the game that's big, they got nephews and they got sons and daughters that's ready to go. They but they know. refuse to get up, give up that popsicle. They want to keep on sucking on that popsicle until ain't nothing left. And until hip hop, you know, probably do like everything else until it wither into the, into the, into the abyss. You know what I'm saying? Until it's no but longer. But again, a, what around. you said makes sense. You the the other generation have somehow figures it out. No matter if they hand it to them or the not. Chillings. But see, me personally, this is my personal experience. I'm figuring. I'm pimping Ken, right? I'm, I'm, I'm trending all over the world. You know, at this time I was doing 10 million views, you know, way before, you know. Views was views. Views was views, <laughs> I'm doing 10 million views. You know, I think I did about 10 million views on one of Vlad's uh, video. Yeah. So I'm doing a, a world star, I'm killing it. I'm on, I got five videos where I'm featured in on, on, uh, on BET uh, Countdown. Ain't now one of them niggas said, hey man, come on, let's do a movie. Hey, now one of them niggas said, hey man, come on, let's do this. Wow. You know what they did? I'm pimp this, I'm pimp that. They tried to take they tried to what, what I created, created and say that it was them. So, you know, you see this, you know, from my perspective, you know what I'm saying? So I, I can imagine how these young people feel because I felt the same way. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I, it, I said, the only way I'm going to beat these niggas, I got to get in the game. And when I get in the game, they can't beat me. I swear to God, ain't them niggas got more game. I got more game than motherfucking baby fingers. Them niggas got their whole body. So they know that. They know I'm coming. They see me. You know what I'm saying? They see the hip-hop fraternity. They see me signing artists. They see me about to make my move because them niggas too stingy. They don't want to give up the game. They don't want to let nigga in. You know what I'm saying? They make a 
nigga starved. That's why I say you see the same motherfucking usual suspects in this game. And this ain't no clickbait. This ain't trying to get no motherfucking views or nothing. This is facts. No, real talk. Why in the fuck? I mean, no, it's real. I'm saying, why in the fuck do you got the same niggas, you know, doing the same shit when it's so many kids and and being a a rapper is like trying to be a raindrop in a motherfucking tsunami? They won't even help. Because you're saying, it's more, it's less niggas than being rappers than it's been in the NBA. You got a better chance to be in the NBA than you got to be a rapper because it's the same usual suspects. When, when Russell Simmons spoke on it, Russell Simmons said, we we done helped, we helped everybody. We helped Leo Cohen is one of the guys. Now, this is a guy that's running YouTube. I'm like, in my mind, did that really help us or did that hurt us? Well, 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 you know, a lot of I mean, time, I don't know if it helped a, a lot. A lot of them, niggas, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of them niggas ain't really help shit because you know, you know, if you look at it, you know, what I'm saying, I mean, niggas is just getting the, the, you know, the little babies, the the NBA young boys, those the cold niggas. Yeah, these the niggas is getting all the money. They getting a the half a million drinks. They get the big. Them, them niggas used to get ten and twenty. You could book them niggas for thirty thousand to fill to, to fill up a a, 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 a a what they call it, Coliseum yeah. arena. So you know, what I'm saying, I mean, the young niggas is figuring it out. The young niggas got the game. You know, the young rappers, I'll fuck with the young rappers. I'll fuck with, you know, Baby. I'll fuck with, you know, 42 Dub. I'll fuck with, you know, a Black Youngster and, and, and uh, a Finesse Two Times. These the niggas that got the game. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they understood how to monetize this shit. They understand how to go set up a YouTube. They understand how to, you know, get money from these uh, 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 Google Sense talk. ads. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. So, so that's 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 what we have. So, but but a lot of the, the older guys, they got their money. You know what I'm saying? But they got it from the old guard. They got it from the old school. Now these young boys, they get money like hand over fist. But so, was they, when they was getting the money, wasn't they, I mean, they was getting it off 360 deals. They wasn't even, a lot of them boys, they left broke. Man, listen. Did you hear what I just said? Man, listen, I guarantee you, if you go to YouTube and you just go all the way back 20 years and just start watching YouTube, it's not a rapper, including Jay-Z, that ain't had some type of beef with their record label. You know what I'm saying? Because even Jay-Z said he had to buy his masters back. You know what I'm saying? So all them niggas had to buy their master back. And if you look at the contract, you got the word slave and you got the word master. They Damn. the masters and the artist is the slave. That's real talk. So you know what I'm saying? So when you break it down, you know, and you think about it, you know, this is basically how deals used to go. And Jay-Z, all of them could tell, you know, he's an exception. Him and Damon Dash had a joint venture, but they'll tell you that this is how a deal go. Okay, so I sign you to a record label. You know what I'm saying? I get you a 50-50 production deal, which means that you're going to pay 50% of a video. At that time, videos was like three, four million dollars. So you coming in, only me $2.5 million on the video. Damn. But I'm going to make you shine. You know, I'm going to charge you for everything, for studio time. All that stuff go against your, uh, 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 your, your royalties. You see what I'm saying? So now, you know what I mean? You sell a million records. If you sell a million records as an artist, you're going to get 45000 at the max. If you, if you go platinum, you might get 45000 depending on how your deal is structured. But the video is going to cost you a half a million dollars. So you already going in $450,000 in debt. So now, you know what I'm saying, you, you go out through the dur- duration of your career, and even if you're smart enough to own your masters, by the time they get through giving you money against your masters, now you don't own your masters and you're broke if you're not a good, savvy business person, right? So, you know what I'm saying, a lot of these artists, you know what I'm saying, they're getting 15% royalties on these deals. You know, we just started seeing recently that they're getting better deals. Like I said, the young people, because they got YouTubes, they can see the bad deals that was made. Now, how much did they pay for, how much did they, oh, well, you probably won't know this, but how was they, how did they come at you about that, that video, that 50 Cent video? What 50 cent the video? fifty cent video when the, when he was talking about P I M P and all. Oh, that. when I was in that video. Yeah. Okay, so basically what happened was I met fifty. But that's when the budgets was up, right? Yeah. Well, they gave me a decent check. So so <laughs> uh so so I met fifty at uh I met him I met him at the Embassy Suites. But what made me want to meet fifty, he had a song called Problem Child. It said, "If you a pimp like Ken, why the hoes don't treat you?" You know, y'all niggas watching Don Divas and some other shit. So. I knew that he had affinity towards me, that he fucks with me, so I uh, immediately had this guy named Dave Cut Above Limo hook me up with, with 50 when he said, yeah, 50 in town. So I went, I, I met him at the uh, Embassy Suites. He didn't know I was gonna meet him, I was just in the lobby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Good game, right? Good so game. That night I got him in my movie, The Ghetto Streets and Second Street, I got him to do a commercial, everything. He did all that shit for me. At this time he was charging millions of dollars for it. And then, uh, 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 
Shaw Money, his manager was like, Nick, you going with us? So I went on tour with him. We went, wow. Master P had booked him for 10 shows, so we went in. I went. I did about two or three shows, and I was like burnt out. I couldn't do it no more. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? So after that, they called me and said, man, we want you to be in the PIMP video. So while we in the PIMP video, you know, uh, you know, uh, Snoop now had they little thing going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so me and, I, 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 I was like, okay, these niggas, they, they doing their thing. I'm gonna go hang out with 50. So I went in 50's dressing room. So 50 gave me a pair of his shoes, them G-Unit shoes, he signed them to my kid. I said, 50, listen, man, I got to talk in this video. He said, you want to say something? I said, yeah, I want to say, Pimpy Ken say, don't down them crown. Crown him. Yeah. They trying to down you because it was the Legions of Doom. And they was all saying, why should we let you in the Legion of Doom? Then I said, Pimpy Ken say, don't down them crown them. So, you know what I mean? It was all the strategy that me and 50 had strategized because Chris Robertson, the guy that was the uh, director of the thing, you know, he didn't have that in the, uh, in the treatment. So we created that. That was created on the spot by me and 50. And 50 was laughing because he said, kid, you a cold motherfucker. You just want to get your name. I said, hell yeah. Because I said, think about it like this. 50 and they said Coca-Cola said don't no, Donald Crown Coca-Cola would have loved that they would have loved that 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 spot. So yeah. now that video is at almost a billion views. So a billion people heard me say Pippa Ken say don't no, Donald Crown. I was just thinking that fast, you know, at the time. So you know that was a good thing, you know, that 50 done for me, man. And 50 the coldest man. man. I love 50. Man, man. Now listen, man, that's a cold nigga, man. No, I hey, love that nigga, hey, man. Hey, hey, no, that nigga heavy, these, dog. Hey, hey, number no, I don't give a fuck uh, all them niggas, I don't give a fuck what they say. Hey, number of them niggas colder than 50. You know why I say 50 cold? Because 50 didn't have the same opportunity. Man, they tried to kill 50. You know, Irv Gotti just said numerous times, we blackball that nigga. You know what I'm saying? This <laughs> nigga, nigga went. Man, man, nigga I like a black. nigga. Hey, man, the nigga's an underdog, and the nigga not only underdog, he's smart as fuck. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The nigga's smart as fuck. You know what I'm saying? The nigga, he done showed him. Hey, the nigga come in the game, and you can see him. He up there at the war show. He said, hi, Vivica Fox. Next thing you know, he was Vivica Fox. I'm saying he a oh, player. He did that a couple of times. Oh, the man, and the man a player, man. I'm, I'm talking about like, I mean, the pimp and all that shit. He know all that shit. Man. Like, I'm like, hey, hey, man, listen. I fuck with a lot of niggas. And then if you read my book, The Art of Human Chess, I broke down the whole 50 blueprint. How the nigga came into the game. How he said, G-Unit. And next thing you know, he had G-Unit clothing. He had G-Unit uh, records. He had G-Unit everything. He, he was a cold mastermind. You know, he basically, he's like a cancer. So he remind me of myself a lot. Yeah. You know, I really love 50, man. I nah, mean, like, real I, I really love the dude. You know what I'm That's saying? That's our people. We but keep I fuck, But, I, you know, even when him and Rick Ross was going through that shit, yeah. I like Rick Ross, too, because I seen Rick <laughs> Ross come up, too. Now, I'm saying, man, you know, it was like both of them niggas, I fuck how with them does, niggas. How do you deal with that when, when you two people that you cut up for is going at each other and you you just don't pick sides. You got to just kind of stay neutral. Hey, man, listen, man. Pimp C didn't like a lot of motherfuckers. Oh, that's my guy right you know there. You know what I mean? Uh, man, I, I, I ain't going to say, I, I, ain't gonna, I might get in trouble. I can't say that. <laughs> but I just say this. One of the, that, that, that Bubby, everybody going to know what I'm saying. I ain't going to say no name. I know y'all hate when I don't say that. <laughs> but one of the biggest rappers in the game, no bullshit, Pimp C really don't fuck with him. I just put it to you like that. You know what I'm saying? Pimp really? C didn't fuck with him. Pimp C, you know, he, he, you know what I mean? You know, we got video of Pimp C, you know what I'm saying? Me, me and Maroy, may he rest in peace, we had video of Pimp C saying some shit about niggas that we thought was cool, but 50, I mean, uh, uh, Pimp C really didn't fuck with him. Pimp C didn't fuck with a lot of these rappers. Pimp C thought these niggas was trying to steal a UGK song. He said, these niggas, man, they the want to scream all this pimp shit now because, you understand me, they know this is pimp, young pimp is doing this shit. I mean, can you imagine the conversation we didn't had about the shit that these niggas didn't try to steal from UGK? You know, a lot of this shit, you know, this pimp shit you hear now, pimp never been saying that shit. His, he came in the game as pimp C. And, well, and and the dope dealing, the so, dope so, dealing as well, the same yeah, thing. So he was a lot of niggas, niggas that want to fuck with pimp. Man, it's been situations, man, where pimp, you know, uh, made them motherfuckers. Man, he made them come out the mud about you know getting some of that pimping. You know, I mean, he made he made jive buy him a motherfucker brand new. Beans. Beans to get in the motherfucking uh, that video. That video. There. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. When, when you but when you look at the way that they ostracized the South during the time when he came up. He had reason to feel the way he did because he was dope coming from the jump. You said last time you loved Pocket Full of Stones. I did too. And and so when during that time in his career and during that time in the South, it wasn't on the South. It was maybe on the West Coast or the East Coast, but the South was not getting that type of traction, man. And I try to tell Go people look that. look at my movie, The Best of Both Worlds. What did Pimp say? He said, them niggas in New York, you know what I'm saying, they was riding trains and they had book packs. He said, we didn't have trains. We didn't ride book packs. He said, we was gripping on grain, gripping on grain yeah. and, and, and driving Cadillacs. 
know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, the South, my daddy from Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. My daddy's a player. Like, my uncles, they was players. They came to motherfucking Chicago and Milwaukee and fucked that shit up. They was the big... All you niggas know Greasy. This, this is my family. You yeah. know what I'm saying? These were the biggest niggas, you know? Big K, all them niggas, you know what I'm saying? From uh, uh, Pee Wee Fergus, them niggas, all of them was country niggas, but they was killing the game. Damn. So... I learned from my own experience being with my father and going down there and fucking my uncles down that the southern niggas was way slicker than the, than the northern niggas. The, 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 the niggas up north, Chicago, them niggas was slow. Yeah. Them country niggas was beating the shit out of them niggas, shooting them bad dice on them niggas and throwing that three car mile. They were paying rope. They were paying rope. Man, they were wearing them niggas' ass out, man. All them <laughs> niggas, Fluky Stoke, all them niggas, them niggas from the south. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Larry Hoover from Mississippi. All these niggas, all the niggas that run shit. You know, uh, the nigga uh, uh, Frank Lucas, that nigga from motherfucking uh, North Carolina. And yeah. you know why? You know why? And my daddy, you know what I'm saying? He basically broke it down to me. He said, Ken, down there, white folks didn't fuck with us. White folks didn't even like us. Wow. So we had to fear for ourselves. He said, we had our own grocery stores. He said, we grow our own food. We did everything. So they had an independent mind state way before. That's why Master P and Cash Money think the way they think. Because in the South, niggas didn't really fuck with, you know, up North, you know, it was all this so-called integration, but it was bullshit. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. It was segregated integration. Yeah. It was some bullshit, but the Southern niggas, you know, that's why Frank Lucas went to fucking China because he was used to going and get his own bread. He was used to go and get his own chicken. He was used to own his own shit. Niggas up North, they was used to getting everything from the white man. They was used to being subservient, you know what I'm saying? But these niggas, these Southern niggas, and that's what Pimp C was saying. He said, man, y'all gonna respect the South. Yeah, he said. Yeah. You know, he said we got our own shit. They call it country rap tunes. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and I understood exactly <laughs> what he was saying. I mean, he the one that made it cool to be from the south. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And then if you if you look at it, I ain't trying to cut you off. No, you look man. at it, you got Jay Z and all these niggas. You know what I'm saying? Getting Bum B and niggas from the south to rap on their shit. And then and, 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 uh, Jay Z was even on that juvenile shit, that hush shit. You yeah, know? he was. He did the re Jay Z was the first nigga to recognize the south as being some players. And then all the other niggas they gradually well, they got followed. it. You know what I'm saying? Gradually because they they looked at y'all as being country and slow. And you know one but thing that, about that it, though, never that wasn't the case. And we didn't uh, during that time. We didn't. We wasn't trying to hear it. You know what I'm saying? You had Big Mike. You had. Uh, you had uh, Big Pokey. Uh, you had Big Pokey, of course. But you had. You DJ had some Screw. You had a bunch of niggas. You had uh, Slim, D, D Red, yeah, Slim yeah. Thug. You had. But but before that, you had Big Mike. Lil Kiki. You had. Yeah, you gotta say Lil Kiki. But I'm going before that because yeah, of my older niggas. Eight ball MJG. Eight ball MJG. Now yeah, Suave House. Suave House. Uh, Mr. Mike. Mr. Mike. Yeah, you had some player people, some dudes that was really putting down some rhymes, and the niggas in the East Coast and West Coast was not the ghetto to boys. Hear it. The ghetto boys. But the ghetto boys were different. They were universal even early on. They was killing them niggas. Yeah. Everybody had to respect them. But I'm just saying the way that they looked at us back during that time. They were not trying to give us no recognition. And I understood Pimp when he said, quit hating the South. And I understood when he said, you know, y'all going to have to respect the South. I, I totally got it because I knew where he come from. You got to remember, man, me and this man roll together. You know what I'm saying? This man a player. You understand know what I'm saying? I mean, he's like a player. Pimp C's a real player. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I told you, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 you know what I'm saying? Man, I, 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 I give myself a trophy. I got to quit talking to this bike. Say. But, you know, I just put it to you like this. Everything these niggas think they know, Pimp knew it backwards. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the man knew about all that shit, the killing, the dope, the Pimp, and all that shit. He was well abreast with this shit. He wasn't just talking shit. He was really, you know, down with the shit. You know what I mean? So I respected him, man. We didn't, man, we didn't been in many a clubs, just me and Pimp C. This one, he was the superstar. Yeah. And we'd be by ourselves. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we had no security, nothing. Every nigga in the club will run up to Pimp and give him a hug and, and be showing him number love. And Pimp, you know how he is. You know, man, no fingerprints, you know, no evidence. You know, this, hey, it's nine kind of stuff. Hello, Pimp. You know what I'm saying? He, he go through that motherfucker like Goldie in the Mac and shit, right? I was like, this nigga, man. I, asked, I didn't ask Mike Jones, but I asked you. When you heard Pimp C saying, I'm, I'm going to this the, the, the cocaine thing, where he said, you heard me right, we play with our nose. Everybody took that. And, you know, of course he was going through his through his struggles or whatever. What did you think when you heard him say that on that song? I seen it. You was there? No, I'm I, I knew Pimp. Oh, I you knew, seen it? I, you I, was there? I knew you he you knew his lifestyle. I knew he yeah. get, I, I'm telling I was around him all the time. When he went, when he called the case, it, it, he had a bag of dope on him. So you knew when he said that, he was just letting it be known, I ain't tripping. Well, you know, a lot of motherfuckers don't understand is that Pimp gonna keep it real. 
So him telling mother he get high or something ain't got nothing to do with how you feel about him. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, like I said, you know, I didn't been in circles, you know, where I seen motherfuckers. I went. I tell you something, and I can't. I'm not gonna say no name, and y'all can laugh. Y'all know I be around a lot of celebrities, but I'm not gonna say no name. But I'm in uh, my man Doobie. May he rest in peace. Yeah, I mean, we we in, we in uh, motherfucking L.A. on Crenshaw. Everybody know Drew Down. He was there. Drew Down. So Drew Down, he can vouch this. So we we at the motherfucking Ath Hour, and one of the biggest celebrities that you ever seen is there, and one of the the, the the old icon. I could say she was there. Shaka Khan was there. Okay. So they there, and you know what I'm saying they wasn't doing nothing. You know what I'm saying. But it's a bunch of motherfuckers in there, and the biggest star that I'm telling you, we didn't see some of his biggest movies was in there blowing. You know, in front of everybody. He didn't care who seen it. I mean, that's their circle. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of niggas use blow. You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas was getting high. A lot of niggas, you know, fuck with they, fuck with their nose. That ain't nothing. That is, I mean, that's something to us because we grew up under the crack era. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, even some of the biggest players fuck with their nose. That ain't nothing big. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, you know, that if I name this artist, would nobody believe but I'm telling you, he got some of the biggest movies in the world. I was surprised to see him there. You like, damn. No, I'm just saying, you know, just think about L.A. Ain't that many big, uh, it ain't that many big top flight uh, <laughs> actors. But one of your favorite actors, you know what I'm saying, me, I give him a little hint. He go all the way back to uh, Spike Lee. Go Damn. all the way back to Spike Lee. He you was know what I'm saying, me? We're blowing. Hard. I mean, it was, a, you know, niggas was in there like, you know, it was like some player shit. And the nigga Doobie was a player, so all the celebrities would come to his spot. Like I said, Shaka Khan was there. I was amazed to see her. Drew Down was there. Drew Down, a, a vouch for this. Niggas go there, you know, at that time, dude was a player. They go and get high and tripping, you know, because, you know, you can't, you know, it, it was in the hood. It's on Chris Shaw. Everybody know, Doobie know that his shit was on Chris Shaw. You know what I'm saying? Me, so me seeing... This particular actor there, I was like, I, it was tripping. You know, my, most people that know me know I told them about it. It was a, it was amazing. It was but crazy. now, but, but I look at him and I see him in interviews and shit. Now I can tell the nigga get high. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, because 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 he do this. If you if you look, and you see a, a, one of those motherfuckers doing this. <laughs> they you know get to it. And he's, they a get big to it. he's a he get he get twenty million or better. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know who the fuck I'm talking about. Dang, you know who the fuck oh, I'm dang, talking about. Hey, right. Oh, and, 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 and Judah can verify that shit. <laughs> Let me ask so, you. So now niggas can't say I'm just capping. They couldn't too many people. Niggas seen the 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 the, the, the C tape. The tape I was talking about Pimp C. But the, you know, motherfucker Judah and Shaka Khan was there. So they know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know, man, my man Kenny Red, rest in peace. All them niggas, they know they was there. No, it's just it's just player circles, man. Oh, they just know it's player circles, man. In certain circles, man, shit happen, man. Niggas get high. You know what I'm saying? I want to ask you about Dumb One, man. Dumb One, he getting older, man. Dumb One is a, a, a one of those guys, man. I always followed him, bro. And I know y'all was both y'all was together. Y'all was a, he was in that uh, 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 that uh, that. Pimp C, uh, that last one was he there? Was he that? I choose you. That 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 one with Outkast and Pimp. C? Yeah, all of us was there. Yeah, I, he was I, there. I actually put them. I brought them all together because. But, but was Pimp he at C. the one that he wasn't? He was on the one with Fifty Cent too. Or no, he wasn't in there. Yeah, he was in yeah, the Pimp C. He was, in, he was in the Nelly Pimp Juice. He was in the yeah, Outkast. Yeah, he always so, so the Outkast thing was a uh, 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 Pimp C gave me. He put me in charge of bringing all the players. So Valentino from Dallas, you yeah, know Memphis. Yeah, I tried Valentino. So, I love Valentino. So we Valentino. got all of them, and then you know we called uh, all the players, you know, and we got them all there, and uh, we was able to, you know, put that together. You know what I'm saying, me and you know Don Juan. But I want to ask about Don Juan. Don Juan is like when I was in prison, right? And uh, I was on my way home. It was a it was a magazine. <laughs> so the, the magazine, the magazine, right? So I cut a magazine out, and it was a picture of Don Juan with his jury on. And I, I used that like when you was in as, prison. Yeah, yeah. I was going. I was like about two months. I used that as motivation. Wow. You know, I would look at that thing. At, at this time, I didn't even know Don Juan. You didn't met him. No, I seen them. You know, because you know, I used to hang out. You know, I ran away from home, and I used to stay at this hotel called the uh, the Madison Hotel, right there on Madison, California. You know, and you know, me and my brother used to paint our mustache, act like we was over. You know, to get in there to get because then you have you just had to look ground. So we. Were, 
be in there acting ground and stuff, walking there with beer, you know. But, you know, we had ran away from home, so we was staying at this hotel. So a dude named Chocolate Dice and all the pimps, they used to come, and Bishop would be coming down the street, down Madison, all the pimps would get excited. They go down Juan. They go Bishop, man. They go Bishop. So that, that's the closest I got to him. But when I got in prison, I seen the picture, so I took a picture of him. So in 95, uh, this guy, you know, I see him at this place called Mr. K. He said, hey, man, you know, we could have a player's ball. You know, at this time, I'm top flight pimp now, you know, hey. I'm, you know, I'm really pimping. So, you know what I mean? I was like, man, you know, who gonna be there? He said, Don Juan and Ice T and all the other. I said, yeah, man, I'm gonna come to that shit. So I gave the nigga 500. I didn't even know this nigga. He could have been running game. I gave him $500 for a BIP. So uh, I came to the party. I walked in there. It's at the Brothers Lounge in Madison on Pulaski, you know, on the west side. So I go up in the motherfucker and I seen Don Juan. That's my first time seeing it. It was like me. I seen like the that. superhero. I said, damn. And he's a hero. That's Don Juan. But then, you know, I was pimping Ken. So I'm talking all this shit. And I didn't, remember I told you, I didn't know I could talk shit. So I'm up in there like, yeah, man, who bitches these? You know what I'm saying? I'm talking and, and running my mouth and, yeah, man, all these bitches just send me, hey, bitch, take one look at her. Hey, bitch, let Rose be your choice. And I ain't trying to impress them. That's just who I was. You know what I'm saying? Then I drink a little bit back then. So I was amplified. And so Bishop now was laughing at me. And then that's the first time I seen Ice T. So I'm talking shit to the council. Yeah, bitch, hold a blow a barbecue a minute. And Ice T standing right behind me. You know what I'm saying? He laughing. So I look back, I see him laugh. I said, oh, this nigga like this shit, right? <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? You know, that was that. I never seen them niggas again until the next year. They threw it again because the niggas like, you know. No, actually, after that, they invited me to the West Side. Okay. And they started hanging out with me. So, one of the things to hang out with Bishop, you got to buy him some Moet. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, we had to buy Moet to kick it with Bishop and shit. You know what I'm saying? That's just, you know, how them niggas do it on the West Side. So, we got to buy them Moet. We kicking it. And, you know, we just start fucking around with each other. You know, and then all the niggas in Chicago, you know, I'm from Chicago, but them niggas, I didn't know them niggas like that. These old niggas, pimp niggas. So they start fucking with me. They start liking me. And they like, man, woo woo. They start inviting me to all these parties and shit. Then I got cool with him. You know what I'm saying? So, but well, how we really got bonded was with Pimp Up Holes Down. Okay, yeah, I, I remember that. I told you that story. So when I met them on the second player's ball, I see like, they go Kenny Ivy. You know what I'm saying? So me and him got really cool. And that's how our relationship extend to this book today. You know what I'm saying? Me, so, you know, me and Ice got cool. And then, you know, ever since then, you know, me and Bishop, you know, we had our little ups and downs. You know, one time I said something <laughs> slick in the magazine. I said, man, you know, I ain't with that church shit. And, oh, uh, damn. No, nah, no, nah, I, I, I was doing it because it was some shit that was going on. And, you know, I guess, you know, the niggas wanted me to pretty much be like, you know, like a soldier, but yeah. I, I was a leader, so I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to follow their rules, but you know, I said some crazy shit, then Bishop said some crazy shit in the Sister and Sister magazine. So finally, if you go on, on YouTube, you see where he came to my house. Yeah, I invited him to my house, him and the porn star Pinky, the dude uh, Richie Rich, they all came to my, you know, my little baby mansion, Kenny Red. You know, so we sitting there, I got him food, I had a feast for him and shit, and then we got on there and said, yeah man, you know, Hey man, you know, uh, I gave him like some money. I don't know, two hundred dollars or something. I said, yeah, man, I gave Bishop some money, man. I paid the church, man. I went to church, man. I fuck with the church, you know. And so the nigga like, yeah, nigga, that's all you had to do, nigga. Don't <laughs> don't talk about the church, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, man, I love the church, you know what I'm saying? I love them niggas. Now the, his right hand man, Reverend Simo, became my partner. You know what I'm saying? He came to my daddy's funeral, and so it just we just all came. Together. It was weird, man. How like. You know, it was confusing because, you know, me being Pippin Ken and being the loud mouth young dude and Bishop being the laid back player, you know what I'm saying? It was kind of, they thought it was conflict, but it really wasn't. You know what I'm saying? I love Bishop and Bishop and Simo, they put me in the game. It wouldn't have been no Pippin Ken if them niggas wouldn't have had the pimps up holes down. So that's how niggas got introduced to me through a platform that they initiated through uh, Tracy, which was uh, the nigga, uh, 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 King Burt's cousin. You know what I'm saying? So that's how we all got did you, tied in. Did you, um, uh, when he first started hanging out with Snoop, did that surprise you or did you see that coming? No, we had already, man, I'm telling you, man, all the select, all, see, you know, I was hanging, you know, I was, now he was Snoop Dogg hard. No, but you got to remember, we was always with celebrities. He was with Ice-T before Snoop. Yeah, remember? sure was. So all the celebrities wanted to be around the pimping. But you know, they was with, he was with Snoop, but I was with everybody. Yeah. So you understand me? So it was like, you know, it was a good thing because I was hoping that one of them niggas would see Bishop and Snoop relationship and fuck with me the same way. Yeah. And, you know, my thing was, you know how I get down, it was going to turn into a bag. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. You understand yeah. me? So that's that's what I was the. I said, man, if I could knock one of these niggas, man, these niggas, you know what I'm saying, they realized the value of the pimping and the rapping, you know what I'm saying? So the nigga that stepped up to the plate was Pimp C. Yeah, dope. So you understand me? 
Live. So 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 Snoop Dogg was Bishop's, you know, person of interest, and uh, uh, Pimp, uh, C. Uh, Pimp C was my person of interest. But I also had Too Short. I also had Outkast. I also yeah. had Lil John. So what I wanted to do to separate myself from Bishop was I wanted to be cool with everybody. everybody. You know what I'm saying? And I got on everybody album, and then that created a check for me. What about P just talk to me about Too Short because he was one of the coldest. And him and Pimp was cool too. They was real good friends. Give me some stories on this Too Short man, dude. I, I, hey, you see us on the on the wall up there. I love so, Too Short, so, man. So, so I'm fucking with this bitch, right? Yeah. I met this bitch at 112, you know. And so I'm popping at her and shit, you know. So she came on to my room and shit, you know. And I'm, you know, I ain't finna have no sex with her. I'm pimping, right? You know what I mean? So I'm talking to her and I'm popping at her and shit, you know what I'm saying? She said, you think you Too Short, right? <laughs> I said, too short, bitch, I'm pivot. What do you mean, too short, bitch? I'm pivot, right? And so, you know what I'm saying? That's the first time too short, you know, other than this music really got even. I, so I'm like, this bitch trying to call me a rapper, right? I'm mad at the motherfucker. I'm like, man, I'm pivot like a motherfucker. Hey, man, I had on an orange motherfucker. Oh, I had an orange it. jacket on with some white slacks, with some orange and white motherfucker gated on, but I was shy as a motherfucker, right? And this bitch talking about some, I'm, uh, yeah, I think I'm too short. So, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm mad at the motherfucker, right? So I said, but you know, the crazy thing, about it was me and Pimp C. Pimp C said, "Man, uh, 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 let's go." Uh, uh, uh. No, nah, it wasn't uh, Pimp C. Uh, uh, Lil John said, "Man, let's go to this video shoot." And I got with Too Short. You know what I'm saying? So this it's a, it's a before story, but this is how we really got close. So I go to the uh, to the video shoot with Lil John. It was a Too Short video. That time Lil John wasn't popping. And then me and Too Short got cool. We swapped numbers, and so I'm staying at, at the uh, the, the uh, Super Eight. You know what I'm saying? A little cheap ass yeah, hotel. Yeah, yeah. But 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 it's in Buckhead. Okay. <laughs> so it was the only hotel that was available in Buckhead. You know, because that time Atlanta was popping. But everybody know what I'm talking about this at the Motel Six or whatever the fuck. It was a little cheap ass hotel. It wasn't cheap because it was in Buckhead, but it was the Motel Six. We we wouldn't stay at it nowhere. So. Uh, I tell Too Short, he said, where you at, man? I said, man, I'm at the Motel 6, so Too Short pulled up in the beers, the great beers and shit, man. And, you know, he said, man, come on, let's go for a ride, man. We talked for, like, hours about the pimping and shit Damn. and the gang. You know, we, he, was, he was just like, you know, whatever. Next thing, you know, I'm at his house. I'm at his house all the time. You know, we throwing parties and shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm doing music down in this motherfucking uh, studio and shit. And we just became, you know, real tight, man. You know, we did two songs together. And, you know what I'm saying? The dude... Really, you know what I'm saying? He like, 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 like. I don't, I don't know what I can say, but you know, he's real deal. I can just leave it like that. You know what I'm saying? He the real deal. You know what I'm saying? He bought, he bought that life, and you know, uh, you know. I mean, being too short was we, we was cool, but we had one issue. It wasn't really him. It was his manager, uh, Ramon. Okay. I booked him for a players' ball. Now, mind you, I'm booking him downtown. We didn't promote it. We sent the nigga 5000 on the, uh, we didn't know how deposit worked. We sent yeah. the whole goddamn money. <laughs> I sent the nigga the whole 5000 just for a guest appearance. He was just going to do a walkthrough. So Ramon said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we promoted this shit, man. I spent all these thousands on motherfucking. The place was like damn that 10000 because I wanted to impress too short yeah. and Bishop, all the rest of them. You know what I'm saying? We had Rolls Royces, niggas from all over yeah. the country, Frank the Bank out of Oakland. I mean, you know, niggas, all, every major pimp in the country was there. Yeah. You know, and you know, it was my party. It was my birthday party. You know, Pimp Snooky, all of them. So Too Short was a no-show. Damn. So, man, I was mad as a motherfucker, man. I was so mad. And Ramon, like, here, man, we just going to send the money back, man. I said, man, the money, man, goddamn, man. I said, I'm going to look bad. I said, man, can I get y'all an extra 5000 He said, man, Too Short book. I was so mad, man. And I was, and I had a little problem about that shit for a long time. How did you time. get past it? Okay, well, we in uh, 112, and me and Good Gang there. So Too Short came Good in game. there. I said, yeah, man. Nigga girl. So the nigga, uh, the, the nigga, uh, Good Gang, like, man, woo, woo, man, that's short. That's my nigga, man. So him and Good Gang was tight before we were tight. So Good Gang went kind of like, you know, broke the ice. And, you know what I'm saying? You know, it was like, whatever. I, we, we mentioned that shit. And, you know, I'm saying it was a dead end situation. You know what I'm saying? Me, but the last time that we did something was last year. Wow. Me, it was, right. it, it was me. So actually, I've been on three songs to put Pimp or oh, Too Short. I forgot about this one. Me, E40, and Too Short did a song. Oh, what the fuck? Last year? Yeah, uh, you probably your wife could probably look it up. Uh, it's uh, something about the track. But anyway, we did that. You know, so that was the last project we did together. That's live, man. I mean, yeah. I love, love love Too Short, man. He's one that I put like when 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 I was talking about that music. I only listened to the South. 
Mm-hmm. Some Big Michael and some Too Short. Other than that, nothing else was playing. Man, I love Too Short. You know, and he w- he come from Freaky Tales all the way up. So you knew how I felt when he didn't show oh, up. Oh, you was hurt. Man, and I, I was hurt. been hurt too. I was hurt, man. Um, no, I had some whole nother questions, but the questions that I had some questions that were popping in between of what y'all were talking about, but y'all X me out of the whole thing. Damn. So I was just like, okay, I let him fine. go. That's all. I just want to hear them stories. No, but um. One thing I wanted to ask, because you said you kicked down the door, you know, because nobody can stop you. you going to come into that industry. But even then, you know, sometimes when you're into an industry, especially where it's white dominated, you know, um, people can tend to blacklist you, tend to, because they don't want you to, to come in. Have you been f- facing that yet? Well, uh, you know, I remember I was doing, uh, when, I was, when I was doing my book, I went into, uh, I went to Wendy Williams' show. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know we were scheduled and everything, and we were supposed to go on the show. And all of a sudden, her husband Kevin said, "You can't go on the show." So the publicist went crazy. You know, it was like you know because of the, the pimp thing, right? So I felt at that time that was the first time I felt like I was being blackballed. But you know, the company I did was a very powerful company called Simon and Schuster. So I called my publisher, and they said, "Give us twenty seconds." You know what I'm saying? I mean, they. I was on the Whitney Williams show. They said, oh, he's going on the show. Y'all might not like the pimping, but we, this is our book too. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the case is, some cases, you know what I'm saying, I mean, it'd be my own people, right, that's scared of the name pimping. Yeah. Whereas you got to remember, this book that's a classic called Pimpology is put out by some white people. You know, that's uh, right. uh, 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 Ice-T and Boosie have verified this. When we went in that room and when Ice-T went in that room, and it's on YouTube, it was nothing but white people. It was not one black person in the room. But these white people, you know, they putting out a book called Pepology. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Now, you know, uh, 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 with Southern Music Distribution, white uh, uh, Mike Walker, known racist, right? You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I gave him the movie Pepology. You know what I'm saying? He gave he 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 put it out for me. Wow. He distributed. But you know, the black companies won't give it to me. The only time they have a problem is when you say hip hop fraternity. So when you say hip hop fraternity, or you say that you know we're gonna do our own everything. Then, you know what I'm saying, they start figuring out ways like, it took me two years, you know what I'm saying? I know this was probably the record labels and people getting at these people to get the registered patent on that thing. I, you, I yeah. was in your you show when the first yeah, guy, yeah, the first receiver. Yeah. Yeah. It took them two years, they gave me every every block they can give me. Well, you need to do this, you need to put this on your website, you need to do this, you need to do this. So in some cases, you know, where you know the black person is gonna be like a, a pioneer you know, or a trailblazer, right. then it becomes a problem. a problem. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when because they, they can't get no money so, from so, me at that point. So to give you the best example of this case is, uh, you know, let's use a case at hand. Let's just take Chameleon Air. We all know him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. Chameleon Air, you know, goes to Universal and tell Universal that he wanted to do a forensic account. He wanted to, you know, check the books. He found that they was negligent, maybe 60, 70,000. He said, if y'all don't let me go, I'm going to tell everybody how to audit y'all, and they let him go. So, you know what I'm saying? We understand, you know, that, wow. yeah, that that the only time a black person become a problem is when they become a trailblazer. I don't know if y'all ever heard of Percy Julian. You ever heard of Percy Julian? Mm-hmm. He's called the forget, forgotten genius. The reason why they call the forgotten genius because he's a black chemist, right? And Percy Julian, what he did was he had over a thousand patents. You know, a lot of this company, the company, the gluten company, all those patents are his patents. You know what I'm saying? Me, uh, he was so smart that they refused to give him a PhD. He had to go over to England to get his PhD. Once he got his PhD, he came back and to be become a noted. PhD, you got to do what they call original properties. You got to do something. You got to write something that got that got something to do with the originality that nobody has done. So what he did was he put these chemistry uh, uh, figures out, and then this white guy stole it from him. So when they stole it from him, you know they gave him this like it's a Nobel Peace Prize type thing. They gave him, the white dude the prize, and then Percy Julian protested. When he protested, he gave them the real. He purposely in order to. To, 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 to get ahead of the game, he had to give them false, you know, false, 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 false information in order to, to, to see if they was going to actually, you know, uh, uh, publish the information. They published it falsely, and he came back. He said, this is the original chemistry for this here, and they had to give him the prize. He's the first black man that ever won this prize. Like, it's like, it's, right. and the chemistry is like the Nobel Peace Prize. Right. He the first black man to get a house in Oak Park, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you know, that shit that Martin Luther King was doing, you know, white people standing outside, they was 
trying to burn his house. He was doing that uh, that, that, that Rosa Parks shit. He refused to move out of a white neighborhood. Wow. So nobody know about him. It's the forgotten genius because he was originator. He And what makes him so popular, and here's the part that y'all gonna love, Percy Julian ended up on his own pharmaceutical company. Wow. He sold it for millions. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so he's the first black man to get into that Space, you know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, and to actually control and dominate that, all that uh, stuff you see with those sweet potatoes and stuff mm -hmm, like that, mm -hmm. making medicine and stuff out of that. He's the brother that did that. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's why it's heavy. No, no. In, 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 in reference to what your wife was saying, that's the problem. The problem is, you know, not that you know we can't get in. It's just that they don't want us to wake up the rest of us. You know exactly, what I'm saying? Exactly, because once one get in, everybody, oh, I yeah. can do it too. Yeah, so, so yeah, I have, that's the only time, you know, like like I said, they put my book out, you know, hey, Simon Schuster to put Pippa Ken book out. That's that's cool. Mike Walker put Pippa Ken a movie out, Pimpology. Pippa Ken got the hip hop fraternity. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, how do we block him out? Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, because wow. we don't want nobody else to think about opening up fraternities where you bringing black folks together and you said we all under one umbrella and we're going to share each other. Our, our, our network is our net worth. And that's where you see that problem persist. You know what I mean? And particularly with black people. As long as we are trailblazers, as long as we are the ones that are doing it, then it becomes a problem. I think that's why they offer Master P and Cash Money so much money. You know what I'm saying? Because they be trying to keep people. You know that right, makes sense. Yeah, right. that makes so, so much sense. I got another question. So, how have you ever been in love? <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, like truly in love. It's hard for me to fall in love because I'm the type of person that got a, a maybe it's a fictitious perspective of love, meaning that. You know, you all the way down with me. You know what I'm saying? Me, you know, if I put your head in the water and I ask you, what do you want? You know what I'm saying? Air or love. You know what I'm saying? You're going to say yeah. love. But if you no, put a no, woman no, here, no. I didn't try this. I put a woman here. Yeah, I remember your story. In, 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 yeah, in the water. Story. And I asked her, what is you, who do you love? Pip and Ken or Air? She said Air. Air. So, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, so I, I like, when I think about love, I'm thinking about people going all out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so, you know what I mean? I, I, I personally, I just, I mean, you got to love me first for me to love you. You know, I don't know Sound why. like my son. Yeah, but at the same time, if a woman puts your head in the water, even if you loved her, what would you say, air or her? But see, I, I ain't really like, like I said, you know, I love to a certain extent, but right. I ain't, ain't nobody really just. So you've never made me, been in love, then, so to say. I mean, I mean, not to that level. To that level. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, everybody that I didn't met, you know what I'm saying, male and female, at some point they crossed me. No, I feel you. My Excuse sons, me. my my kids, everybody. At some point, you know, we had a problem. So you know, what I mean, I understand. Hard to it's, trust. It's a thin line between love and hate. Right. So, but at the same time, you know, what I'm saying, when I kiss my daughter on the forehead and tell her I love her, I love her. You know, what I'm saying, me. You know, if I'm with a broad or son and I kiss on the cheek of son, you know, yeah, love, mommy. You know, what I'm saying, if I say to a, a, a CEO, "What's up, love, my yeah. brother?" You know, it's to that extent. You know, what I'm saying, me. But love to me is like full letter words, like fucking shit. You know what I'm saying? So fuck that shit. <laughs> Pippa Kid in the building. <laughs> Pippa Kid say he ain't trying to hear it. Man, so I was going to ask you about did you ever hang out with, uh, and I'm going back to Pimp C, Too Short and Pimp C at the same time? Because they yeah, were yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we've you know, we been in, on, on circles together. You know, I was supposed to be out there in L.A. That when, when he got when killed. He, when, yeah, when you know he passed. Because yeah. he went to a, a, a Too I Short I wish you had been there. Yeah, so you know, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, we was uh, we've been on, on on circles together before, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, uh, but the last time all three of us together, we was he was in a casket. Yeah, I know. You know yeah, was, I know it, man. It's it just it, the the stories that come from you and uh, just being with all these different people. It doesn't surprise me that you come out with the hip hop fraternity because it's only evolution to me because we need it. We need it so bad to where our people can see a place where we can come together and unite and do things to grow and not disrespect each other's independency. Uh, how much do you value the independency that the game has given us now with the music industry versus, you know, the way the way it used to be, they had you by the balls and curly like we were talking earlier, but how much more, how much better do you think that is for our people in this whole hip hop, uh, you know? Well, you brand? know, I'm, I'm a Moorish American, so I was, you know, taught up under the Honorable Noble Drew Ali. 
So the Honorable Drew Ali taught us that it takes finance to uplift the nation. So, you know what I mean? You know, in our teachings, you know, we talk about economic development. We talk about, you know, uh, you even see the Honorable Elijah Muhammad using, you know, when he was Elijah Pu'il, he was once a member of the, of the, of, of the Morris Science Temple. You see him, you know, owning their own, you know, grocery stores. You see him owning their own farms. You see him owning, buying their own land. And at the time of the death of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you know, the Nation of Islam was worth $50 million. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm under those teachings. So when we think about, you know, things, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we always think independent because we have to, you know, we believe we don't want to, you know, separate from America, but we believe that we must have our own. We believe we should yeah. have our own land, our own uh, politics. We believe that we should have our own property. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's almost like, you know, group economics. You know, as the, uh, uh, Dr. Clan Claude Anderson always talk about, you know, it's like a five-story, you know, building. You know, you first you got to get, you know, money. Then you got to get economics, you get politics. I mean, you get politics, you get education, and then we work our way on up to the top religious and the rest of that stuff, right? So, you know what I mean? Yeah, we have to because here's the situation why it's so important for black people to have their own. In any situation where it is black and white, the white is going to always rise to the top. Right. And I'm going to tell you why, because the society, as I spoke on before, if you want to look at what, what, what white people is, white folks is the right hand and black folks is the left hand. So everything in society, our steering wheel, our, everything is geared for the right hand. Everything is geared for the white man. You know, it's the left hand. The left hand is left out. You know what I mean? So if you're a left-handed person, people be like, you're left-handed? Like, they shot. You know what I'm saying? Even the steering wheels is always geared towards the, and well, that's the way society is, you know, uh, you know, if we don't separate, then we'll never be able to become equal because our children will always be reading about Maynard Keynes. They'll be reading about Karl Marx. They'll be reading about, you know, uh, uh, George Washington, you know, uh, 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 Jackson, who were both slave owners. So the backstory to everything is that there's some some uh, 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 Jim Crowism and there's some white supremacy. Mm. So you know what I mean. When you look at that, you got to be very cautious. Of what are you? What are you feeding your children? Uh, it was George G. M. James had a book called not George, uh, uh, the, uh, the Stolen Legacy. Uh, 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 man, it's the tip of my head, tip of my mouth. The mom. Stolen Legacy. Uh, 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 Man, 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 look that up. My mama gonna kill me if I can't remember <laughs> this man's name. I just said his name a million times. Um, well, anybody, y'all know what I'm saying. Go look it up, the guy who wrote The Stolen Legacy. It's just not clicking in my head because I'm, I'm trying to tie a bunch of stuff together. When you look at uh, The Stolen Legacy, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you, you know, not The Stolen Legacy. That, yeah, nah, the George, Mis George James? Yeah, yeah, George James. But no, nah, The Miseducation of Negro. Okay. The Miseducation of Negro. That's what I'm trying to think. Uh, I think it was Carter G. Wilson, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the mis Miseducation of the Negro, when you think about The Miseducation of the Negro, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he talks about that the black man has been so marginalized. He said that if the white man said that it was a door, and if it wasn't a door, he said that the black man would cut a hole in the wall, and make a door. You know, Carter Woodson. Carter G. Wilson, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where we at. You know what I mean? Everything. You know, your kids would never. I mean, like, look, look. I'm gonna give y'all this. Is the best example. When you send your kid, how many kids y'all got? We got four. four. So every time y'all send y'all kids to school, they go to school. Uh, mommy, 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 I don't want to go. The white kids say, uh, mommy, mommy, I don't want to go. By the time they get into fourth grade, you know what I mean, you know, you know, the white guy, he's walking like this. So by the time of graduation, the black guy got his pants down, he got rags and shit hanging out, he got all type of tattoos, he acting like a gangbanger, and the white dude, he probably graduated with high honors because everything in that curriculum is geared towards white supremacy, the elevation of the white man. And I'm not, this ain't no racism. It's, real. it's just that everything is like, you know, you can't read a book without white, great whites. The only person we hear about is Martin Luther King and they killed them. The backstory is, is that a white man killed them. So we still can't get the adulation or the benefit of being proud of this man because we said, damn, they killed our hero. But you know, you could go to George Washington, you could go through, you know, Thomas, uh, Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson, just so many white heroes. Litany of you know, Abraham it's a Lincoln. So, so, so Abraham Lincoln, so that's the problem when when the, uh, when the, the people, the Afrocentric people talk about cur curriculum, of cur cur curriculum of inclusion, that's what they're talking about. Mm. You know, it's all psychology. You know, if I'm telling you white, 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 just like, you know, I think my Muhammad Ali said it best. He said, in society, he said, the black cat, cat 
know what I'm saying? I mean, it's bad luck. The white cat is good luck. He said the angel food that. cake is white. Devil food cake is black. He said when you look at the pictures of heaven, all the angels is white. And what niggas at in the back cooking kitchen? You know what I'm saying? If you step over a black cat, you know what I'm saying? You 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 it's bad luck. The white ball control all the balls. The last ball to get knocked in is the eight ball. When you play chess, the white piece move first. But see, all this is psychology. It ain't racism, it's psychology because the people that was in charge of creating the society, especially after 1865, you know, Jim Crowism was in charge and the psychiatrists, everybody was a part of it and to keeping the Negro marginalized, keeping the nigga inferior. That's why they say yeah. Negro. The word nigga means inferior. And you have all those, uh, like the philosophers, uh, Immanuel Kant, John Dewey, all of those white they was They was complicit. They, was they, complicit. Were, they were doing what they were supposed to do for their people, and you can't be mad at them either. And just like... Did you, you hear what I just said? Hey, but the best, the best example of what they we did... We got to do the best, for our best, people. When Michelangelo painted the 16th chapel, you yeah. know, in the Vatican of Rome, when he painted that chapel, he painted Jesus white. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and we know the Pope and everybody knew about the black Madonna. They yeah. knew that it was a black woman holding a baby black Jesus, and they knew that in the Bible it said that Jesus' hair is like lamb Ooh, wool, that's right. and that his skin is like, like bronze burned in heaven, and then when the first coin you see, a Justinian coin, you see the Justinian coin, you know what I'm saying, I mean, of a black Jesus. You know what I'm saying, I mean, you go and you look at the New Testament, the first history, historical history of the New Testament was on papyrus papers. Papyrus That's is right. a leaf that grows in Egypt. That's right. So the, the, these, this is the first testament. So that means that the first uh, 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 inscriptions or the first uh, 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 whatever you want to call it, writings of the uh, uh, the New Testament was written in from 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 Africa. Wow. You know, when Jesus fled from uh, uh, Jerusalem, where did he fled to? Egypt, Egypt, Africa. So, you know what I'm saying? I mean, these are the things that, you know, we have to be considerate of. You know what I'm saying? I mean, say, yeah, okay. Even the, the, the Mexicans, you know what I'm saying? I mean, their Jesus is Latino. So, everybody going to paint the society according to their perspective, which is understandable. That's why it's so important that our children separate intellectually, uh, you know, from a curriculum standpoint, you know, uh, you know social standpoint, from their European counterparts because if we don't, what's going to happen is we're going to have a bunch of, of our people creating a recycle. I don't care how how black you think you is, CEO. When you see certain police, you see police say they go to man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, uh, you know, you, you know, you see your homie, you say that's my homeboy. Yeah. But you call the police the man. It's a reason why this. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Frances Quest Wells in the book, The ISIS Paper, she talk about all these things. So we got to educate ourselves. It's cool to be a pimp, player, hustler, but educate yourself. And that's why you see me doing the hip hop fraternity because I don't have no fear. I understand the psychology. I know where the bodies is buried. I know the game. So you understand me? I'm moving in such a way where I'm like, yeah, y'all slip. Y'all left the word hip hop and fraternity open. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, if y'all would have knew that a nigga. You know what I'm saying? I mean, not no Kuta Kante, but a Kwame and Kuma. You know what I'm saying? The guy who uh, free, who, who was the first one that uh, uh, called independence in Africa in, this, in, in the country of Ghana. You know what I'm saying? Y'all knew there was going to be a Kwame and Kuma in hip hop, which is Pippi Ken. You know, they said, hey, let's unify this thing. Let's bring these black folks together. Y'all would have never had, y'all would have bought the name. I know how y'all do. <laughs> they would have bought the name. They buy all the names. That's real. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, but, but see, God bless me with this God knowledge. Bless. And so now that I got it and we unifying brothers and sisters all over the country, it's, it's counterproductive to everything they stand for because they get 100% interest off of every dumb nigga that go in there and sign a, a, a thing. Like I said, niggas go in there, they don't look at, they don't look at obligation, they look at compensation. Every nigga that signed the deal signed it based on compensation. Compensation is how much you getting paid. A million, hell yeah. Two million, hell yeah. 20 million, hell yeah. They don't look at the obligation. They don't look at where this shit gonna be demonstrated at and where it's gonna be distributed at. It's gonna be distributed in China, uh, uh, Bangkok, yada, 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 yada. And they look and they're like, what? So now, you know what I'm saying, I mean, uh, all them niggas that signed a deal back then, even Jay-Z now, they never anticipated uh, uh, the blockchain. They never anticipated cryptology. They never anticipated NFTs. They mm -hmm. never anticipated all this stuff because it wasn't in the contract. That's right. You know, look at compensation. So, you understand me? All these things are, you know, things that harm our children, you know, especially our young children that have yeah. aspirations to yeah. be, be, be entertainers. So what I'm here to do, I'm here to disrupt that, right? 
You know what I mean? And I'm showing that even though I've been to prison, even though I was a street nigga, I still can do business with corporate America. That's you know? real. And I want to get to this. Let's Ice talk T. about Ice T's book. Uh, yeah, Smith. why you got to ask that question? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. No, I wanted, I wanted to go into the pimp stuff first. Oh, okay. okay. Let's go. Okay. Okay. My question is: Did you ever? Okay. Did any of your hoes back then ever got beat up by a trick? Yeah, yeah, one of my hoes uh, got ran over, her foot got ran over by a trick. Uh, you know, tricks beat them up, take the money back. That shit happened all the time. What did you do about it? All I can do is I tell bitches all the time, and I ain't mean it in a negative way. Listen, only thing I can do is give you some game. One of the things I tell bitches, you know what I'm saying, if they listen, hey, put a razor up under your tongue. I used to do it in prison. You know what I'm saying? Put one in your wig. You know what I'm saying? If the trick ever try some funny shit, cut him right between his eyelashes. Cut him right here. It ain't going to kill him, but he's going to make him bleed blood in his eye and you can hit him in his mouth. He won't be able to block. I said, that's the only thing you can do as a frail, a frail, a, a frail a, a statue. So, you know what I'm saying? That's one of the things I do. So, the only thing I can give a bitch because I'm not there. I can just give her a game. Because if the trick beat up and he disappeared, what I could do? So I taught him how to protect themselves. You know, I taught him how, you know, if you're in a room with a trick and, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you at like a hotel that's expensive, just say my sister next door. If something happened, knock on the knock on the, the a fake. It ain't nobody there, but it's going to deter the trick. You know what I'm saying? Me. So those were the game. That's the game that I gave bras. You know what I'm saying? Me. Never go into a dark alley. Never go to nowhere. You know where you feel uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Me. You know. Uh, you know, always have your phone on speed dial. It was just certain things that you could teach them. But it's nothing that no pimp, I don't care who he is, can do for something that can do to help his brother she in a precarious situation unless he's standing outside the door. Right. And we call that Mexican pimping. <laughs> oh, so you never did that. <laughs> Hell no, I went on some brother. <laughs> you know, what, what, and I'm going to ask but, this before you ask this uh, while I got on my mind. Mac T and them did a movie, and, uh, a movie and, and, yeah, and it ain't and, easy. Yeah, and, and did you have any dealings with that or, or, or you didn't? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm the one that Coach Mac. Okay. So all the words, all them, that shit he said, yeah, that's, that's my shit. You know what I'm saying? Me, so, you know what I'm saying? Me, Mac would call me every day and I was kind of preparing him, you know, to do the movie. You know what I'm saying? Me, and, you know, uh, you know, we was out there, you know, we was uh, 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 fucking with them and we did that movies in Crenshaw. I think it was in, um, in, in, uh, in L LA, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Uh, a lot to do with that. That's real. That's uh, that's all I want to ask. Go ahead. Did you ever have to slap one up or beat one up? Oh God! Well, uh, to be uh, for uh, just for, to get for, her, for, yeah, just to have her do what you need her to do. Well, for full disclosure, you know, I never ever <laughs> had to, you know, beat nobody up like that. But I have, you know, had physicalities. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Yeah, I have had physical situations where I had to. I had situations where you know I had to. You know, check somebody. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But that was always my last result. You know, because I didn't feel, you know, I didn't want to go to jail. You got remember, I just got out of jail, so I wouldn't even step on an ant at that time. You know, you know so my, what would warrant you for for you to have to do that? Well, what did, give me an example well, of something that she did. Well, if if you if you were a bra and she's acting real irate and she tried to put her hands on you. Or, you know, sometimes women are crazy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They'll be mm -hmm. like, motherfucker, you, you, you know what I'm saying? And you might have to be like, get up off me. Mm -hmm. Or, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes, you know, I know guys that discipline their women. If a woman is being disrespectful in front of other women, you know, every now and then he might check her. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that definitely are situations where I encountered that situation. But, you know what I mean? For the most part, most guys, you know, they don't have to do that, you know what I mean? Cause it's that, so crazy that you said that because when I thought about that, I thought about um, men in general who deal with crazy women as in a relationship. Right. And a lot of times these women tend to tend to want to hit you, fight you as much as you might not want to do that. You're trying to escape, or lock the door, try to keep you there. Yeah, they provoke you. Provoke you and then as soon as you hit them, they call the police and say he abusing me and although she was the first person to start. So how would you advise a man to not get into that situation. Well, one thing you have to do, you got to control your emotions. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, one thing I do is I just be quiet. I sit down, I watch some TV, and I let that person rant. You know what I'm saying? But if you go back and forth with a woman, you're not going to win. Because a woman, you know, God gave a woman the same thing he gave a skunk, a white stripe and a belly full of funk. You know what I'm saying? You know, a skunk, right, is very harmless in, in statute. But once they shoot their funk at you, you go, uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. Once a woman shoot her funk at you, it's a rap.com. You know what I'm saying? Because she can all argue. Men don't think. You know what I'm saying? All we do is, you know, 
You know, even when y'all little, y'all even y'all y'all can map out y'all wedding all the way down to you know the color dress you want because you put, go grow up all your life playing with dolls. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got a doll house. You know you cook it for your husband and everything. What are we doing? We out there outside popping willies. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We coming in. We out there fighting and being macho. So you know what I'm saying? I mean, women are analytical, and and men are impulsive. Right. So you know what I'm saying? There's no way you can out you can be impulsive and outthink a woman if she's being analytical. So right. she she's gonna play you out. She's gonna do everything to yeah, get you, you to react. Go, she, if she wants you to go to jail, she knows exactly what we say. You punk ass nigga, bitch. Who you? Boo 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 boo. Mm -hmm. I'm calling the motherfucking police, nigga. Bam, you in jail. You right. know what I'm saying? I mean, now you know what I mean. You know you facing 10, 20 years. You know. But what so, I can't stand about that those situations is that women are so emotional where they do that on the fly. But as soon as he gets arrested, she start crying and want him out. She don't want to press charges. She don't want it. But the state will take it right up and they'll press charges. Well, you know, that's because, you know, at the time, you know, she's feeling that, you know, she had to do this, you know, because she's upset. But in reality, once people calm down, that's why I always tell people, before you make an irrational move, think about it. You know, because once you think about it, you know what I mean? It, you know, I just had situations where the women got aggressive and the police came and they took the women to jail. So the women got That's to be- That's rare though. Yeah, yeah, but the women have to be cautious to these days now too mm -hmm. because it was so many guys who, you know, went to court and, you know, it been cameras and all kind of stuff showing that in some it's cases, the, woman, the woman is being aggressive as well. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I mean, you know, then, you know, that woman can be devious. You know, sometimes, you know, a woman could be in a relationship with a man and she don't want the man, mm -hmm. but she don't want nobody else to have him too. Yeah, you would think that because you were a pimp and stuff like that, you would know everything about a woman, how to deal with a woman. That's why even when I asked you about have you ever been in love, I would think that you would know exactly how to. I'm not. A, I'm not a fake love. <laughs> oh shit! I, I I can make a bitch feel like she the world if you, that's what you ask me. Yeah, you know I can make. But anybody how long can you keep? How can how long can a man fake love for? Well, you know, women fake love too. Like you know, you gotta remember every bra that I'm sending out the door. She They're got game. Right. She got game. So she, she, you know, a trick. You know what I'm saying? He having sex with her. She, oh, I love you. I love you. That's gonna make her get more money. But she not seen that same trick every single night for the rest of her life. No, but you know, it's a, it's a game. Mm -hmm. Everybody playing a game. You know what I'm saying? I don't care whether you want to play the game or not. We all playing a game. You're playing a game. I'm playing a game. Everybody playing a game. Whether it's a game of love, whether it's a game of chess, whether it's a game of checkers, we all play in a game. So in some situations, instances, you know, the woman may not love, like for example, you know what I'm saying, I mean, if uh, a guy, you know, uh, was doing something and you wanted to get his attention and you was really, you know, like, he want to go out, he want to go play with his homies and you just start crying, nigga, you don't love me. And you cry, you, you cry and crack it out of tears. You know, you said, this nigga gonna go for this shit. And you know what I'm saying? He gonna be, oh, baby, yes, I do, I love you, so he don't get to go out with his homeboys. That's a game, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody playing a game. Women always talk about niggas playing a game, but a lot of women play games, too. Yeah. It's just that y'all play, play on a whole different level than right. me. You know what I'm saying? But we all playing games mm -hmm. at the end of the day. That's true. You know true. what I'm saying? I mean, even your child, my child, I got- Oh, Lord, don't even talk about it. No, 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 this is, this, my son, I talk about this in my book, my son, Lil Kenny is Supreme. So, uh, Lil Kenny is older than Supreme. So, mm -hmm. Lil Kenny was the baby for like two years before Supreme was born. So, when Supreme was born, so I'm watching the Lakers, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm holding Supreme, you know what I'm saying, to keep him from crying. So, Lil Kenny is crying because he want me to hold him because he feel that's how right. Supreme got me, you know? And so, you know, they play these psychological games even though, you know, they're a baby, they still play games. So we were born playing born games. Born into it. Everybody play, human beings play games, you know what I mean? Because, you know, these are certain tools and, and techniques that we have. But, you know, I advise any guy, you know, if you're in a relationship, don't hit the woman. You know, because women are like Mack trucks. You can hit them with a baseball bat. And they'd jump up, nigga, that's all you got? You know what yeah, I'm even if, if, you, they, even if, you, yeah, if, if you don't mad. hit them, though, they still going to holler you mentally abused them after so many years. I'm just going to be real with you. You're not getting out of being uh, the bad guy. Well, that's, that's, that's you know better than going to jail. That's better than going to jail. <laughs> See, if you, if you hit them and, and, and she's not fast enough, she don't understand how the system works, you can end up spending a long time in jail. Like your wife was saying, that's what she's going to be saying, talking about something, I want my man back. Yeah, so, yeah, I got so, one, of my, so one, of my one of my girls doing that now. Sometimes when, when you're driving and niggas driving crazy, you got to drive for that nigga that's driving crazy. Yeah, yeah. You jump in lanes, you got to put your brakes on. 
You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to think for the people that don't want to think for themselves because those would be the people that would make you get crash. And then once you crash, you know what I'm saying? It's a rap.com. You sit in the county jail. Man, you both been a penitentiary. You know how that is. Let me ask you something, man. You know, I know you've been on a lot of podcasts, a lot of different big facts from B, B High, all the off the porch. I seen you with a lot of people. Y'all kicked it. It was a cool situation. I like what y'all had going on. You know what I'm saying? But this boss talk, man, we love you, Bimby Ken. You our guy. Um, I ended up, uh, what we got for him here? We have an award. There you go. See, hey, we're we not trying to hear it, man. We're not going to be, we may be independent. And we may be a little bit smaller than those guys, right? Mm -hmm. But the way we love is on a whole nother level. Man, See, I'm we love kidding. over here. You know? I, I, and I'm going hold on, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. It says, presented to Mr. Ken Ivey, a.k.a. Pimp and Ken, in recognition of being a successful entrepreneur and author, which evolved into the hip-hop fraternity, HHF, striving to help young entrepreneurs, 2022. Hey, man, I'm grateful, man. Thank y'all, man. Hey, man, what's happening? Ain't it about y'all funny shit? God damn. What y'all do? Cut this motherfucker out of the funny shit? Yeah, well, don't, don't, don't let me find out y'all cut this table, <laughs> baby. Motherfucker and trophy, man. Hey, hey, we just wanted to do something to show we respect you and we care about, you know, what you've done. I'm in. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Whatever you doing, I'm doing. You well, know that. When me and you talk, I told you, man. Well, once you said you bringing people together, and I'm like, hell yeah. Well, one thing I want to say, you know, and I want to, I feel I would be remiss not to say this, that you, uh, Beehive, and DJ Screen has been some real, and Carlos Miller has been some yeah, good friends Yeah, that's my boy, my, yeah. You know, anytime I say I got something going on or whatever, I call them, like when I call them and told them, man, you know, Boosie Book is coming out, all of y'all was receptive. Oh, you know? yeah, for sure. When I told you that, hey, man, I didn't like this situation, you said, man, come on. I told you I had some new artists. You always said, come on. Yeah, so come all on. of y'all have been, you know, now you beat them because they ain't never gave you no award. You shouldn't have done it this year. Hey, hey, be high. Hey, Carlos. Hey, DJ Squid. No, no, no. Hey, but but you know what though? I got to I got to take that back. Them niggas did. Uh, DJ Screen came to my uh, uh, hip hop fraternity award. That's love. You know what I'm saying? Me and he was a busy schedule. He he, he cut his schedule. That's real. And Beehive came to the hip hop fraternity awards. And uh, we gave them awards too. So you know, I mean, all y'all is equally, you know. Oh yeah, for sure, man. It's I just want to talk fun, about man. this last thing. <laughs> <laughs> now look here, y'all. I want y'all to go get this book by my man Ice, Ice T. Ice T. You know what I'm saying, man. This is split decisions. You know. Now, now you was asking me about this book at first. Now, one, one thing how this book became is that Ice T is hard to get to do anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's so yeah. He's busy. busy. You know what I'm saying? He's so busy, and so. When I told him about it, he was like, yeah, 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 okay, Kenny. Yeah, 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 okay, Kenny. So uh, his man, uh, 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 Spike, was getting out of prison. So he called me, he said, say, man, I'm ready to use that favor. And so I was so happy because, you know, he thought that I was doing him a favor, but he was doing me a favor because now I know that everybody up at the publishing company loved Ice-T. Hey. Now, Boosie, we was able to do it over a conference call, but they said, we ain't doing this ice tea deal unless you bring ice tea up. So I brought ice tea to the office to do this book. So we was in the office, and man, I'm telling you, man, that dude, ice is cold. Man, man he had them white women. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy, right? Cause you know, and they was just so, they was just so excited, you know what I'm saying? They love it, man. And, and, and ice tea said, I tell you, this is how I do it, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Ice, man, you know, this is a good book, man. And y'all, we trying to get it to the New York Best Time Seller. So, y'all go get the book. You know what I'm saying? Me? And y'all go get my man Boosie book across, who, across who, the tracks. It's, it's Spike. Who is Spike? Spike, okay. The, the reason why they won't go get this story because Ice-T was supposed to be in the penitentiary, too. So, this dude and Ice-T used to rob banks and they used to rob jewelry stores together. So, uh... Spike ended up doing 20 years in prison, and Ice ended up going, you know, to, to be Law Order guy, you know yeah, what I'm saying, in, yeah. in the big movie superstar, in the rapper, you know, so it's very interesting. So Spike got out like maybe two years ago, and when they got out, you know what I'm saying, I mean, Spike, uh, uh, Ice T, T told me to make it happen. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying, I mean, you know, I, I, I was able to go up to Simon Schuster, and we got the book done, and, you know, like I said, you know, Spike is a real 
interesting guy. He's also going to be in the, the documentary we got coming out called The Making of an Autobiography. So, you know, they actually got the interviews. We talking. We talking about the ups and downs of the project. You know, so it's really, really, really uh, some good things. And then Ice is also a business partner of mine. You know, he owned a percentage of my film company. You know, okay. so, uh, you know, we are... Uh, you know, we got a lot of things that we do. Uh, you know, he's uh, he's the ambassador to Hip Hop Fraternity and advisor. You know what I'm saying? He's the first celebrity to ever do a commercial for Hip Hop Fraternity. So Ice is a real friend. Now, you know you get 100000 200000 a commercial, right? Mm -hmm. When he did Hip Hop Fraternity, commercial was zero. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and he's the first one, the first people to join Hip Hop Fraternity. So these are my real friends. You know what I'm saying? These are people that I really do business with. But wow. you know, that doesn't preclude, preclude me to do deals. So I'm reaching out to everybody out there. If you want a book deal, hit me up at 404 790 Four zero four seven nine zero ninety six twenty seven. Make sure your manager contact me, and you got to have at least four to five million, four to five million Instagram uh, followers. They're not gonna just give anybody a deal. So if you're calling me and you got two followers, man, I don't know what to tell you, my <laughs> homie. But you know, what I'm saying? I fucks with you. I know your shit tight, but you know what I'm saying. These folks, you know, what I'm saying they try to get some money, and they feel that's how they can get their money. So. You know, you know, both of these books, man, are classics, man. Classics. You know, and let me, tell you, tracks, let me tell you how good this decision. book is selling. Let me tell you how good Boosie book is selling. So at the time of the Beehive uh, interview, it was at about a hundred and some thousand on Amazon. Okay. Within 24 hours, it, it, was, it reached 7,000. So that's, wow. out of all the books in the world, it was the 7,000 book that quit. We predict by uh, the next two or three weeks, it should be number one. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Ice-T is the best seller as well. You yeah. Know? So we, we basically, you know, we're just trying to show young people what entrepreneurship look like. That's why we, when me and Richie Rich had a conversation the other day, we was talking about uh, independence. I said, we own our own social media. That's independence. Yeah. We own our own radio. That's, That's independence. You know what I'm saying? Me, we own, if you don't own it, you're not independent. So we own all our shit. You know what I'm saying? We, we own, you know, we have the, 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 the register patent and, the, uh, uh, you know, the copyright, all that for our company. You know what I'm saying? Universal is not on our company. You know, Def Jam is not on our company. Sony Music, Columbia Music. So that's what's important. You know, whatever you do, young people, and I'm going to close on this note, make sure you own it first and then negotiate. Because if you own 100% of the product uh, or your IP, then you can negotiate better and never give up no more than 40%. Always keep 60%, not for yourself, but for your children, and your children's children. Man, thank you so much for coming on the show. We love you, man. Pimp yeah, Ken, done it back. again. Another great interview, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the <laughs> bosses talk. And we out. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.